Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Okay, so now we get to the question of can you reuse piston rings and rod bearings? Now, I already went through in a previous video about reusing the main bearings and the rod bearings. So if you want to go check that out, it was a couple versions, a couple videos previous to this one. And piston rings. You can use piston rings again. The piston rings in this engine only had a couple of hours onto them. They never saw a load. They never had a chance to really seat. When I looked at the bores of the cylinder that they came out, the cylinders were still uh, cross-hatched and the rings never really seated so they're still in good shape but you still want to check all the rings for any slight nicks scratches cracks anything like that so when you take pistons out of the engine be very very careful not to put a nick in any of the edges of the ring uh, and be careful not to uh, put any scratches in them so keep them in a, a good condition and just be careful and when you take the engine apart Keep the main bearings in the same order so you can put them back in the same spot and keep your rod bearings numbered so you can put those back on the same pin or the same journal of the crank that they came off of because they're already pre-matched. So we're going to go through a few checks here and we're using the same rings, same rod bearings, but we have to do some checks on the rings and checks on the rod clearances. Install the upper main bearings and apply a light coat of assembly loop. Gently set the crankshaft into place. Check the end play. No end play in the crank is not good. If there is no end play, you will either need a smaller thrust bearing or have the crank thrust surfaces machined down. Lube the main bearings and install the caps. The clearance was already measured in a previous video, so I don't need to do it again. Now these are ARP studs and all ARP fasteners require the ARP lube under the head. Lightly run down all the fasteners. Always torque in three stages. These go to 90 foot-pounds, so I go 30, 60, and final to 90. I check the ring gap on the two top rings by using a piston to push the ring evenly into each bore. I use the same rings to check every bore, and all of them were good. You use the same rings in every bore to make sure you don't have any variation in the rings. Install the piston with the bearings dry and push it up to the crank. Use plastic gauge to check the clearance on all of the pistons. These bearings were already matched to the crank when I took them out. Just make sure they put back in exact same positions. Remove the cap and check the clearance. And don't forget to clean the plastic gauge off of both sides of the bearings. Apply some assembly loop to the bearing and push it back to the crank. Use assembly loop on the other half of the bearing and install the cap. Always torque in three steps. These go to 60 foot-pounds. Rotate the crank after each piston installation to make sure it rotates freely. Do this for every piston in case one binds. That way you won't have to guess which one is binding. Put a light coat of oil in the top of the bore. Clock the rings according to the manufacturer's instructions and install the pistons and check the clearance again with plastic gauge. Repeat this process for all of the remaining pistons. After torquing all of the rod bolts, I do a quick check with a different torque wrench to verify all of the bolts are fully torqued. When you take your engine apart, do it very carefully. Don't nick any of the pistons or the piston rings. Don't drop the bearings. Don't do anything to damage any of the parts. That way, when you put it back together, you can be confident that you're putting back in the same spot. Mark them all so they can go right back in the same spot you took them out of, and you shouldn't have any problems. Now, the next video, we're gonna go forward. We're switching something here. This engine had a hydraulic flat tappet cam, and we're switching to a hydraulic roller cam. And if you think you can just change the cam by pulling out the cam, putting in a roller cam, and dropping in some roller lifters and that's all you have to do, that is not true. There are several things you have to check before you can switch. As a matter of fact, there's work that has to be done with the heads in order to change from a flat tappet to a roller cam. It's not that easy. We'll go through that in uh, the videos coming up. So hit the like and subscribe button so you can follow along with this. I'll share with you what's really important to check when you do switch from a flat tappet to a roller cam and most importantly, you know me, the why. Why are these things important? Why is it important to check? So follow along. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.